hear God, the Most High, the most amazing, the only one in the universe that can hold this earth in the palm of his hand and squeeze, the only one that could put fear in the hearts of the biggest men. You got a guy like Mike Tyson, you know how much fear he instilled in the heart of man? You hear big gangsters talk about him. They were shaking around him. Now, if that's just a human being, this guy's going to be dead and buried in the dirt. And you tell me you're scared of him and you're not scared of God? Are you kidding me? It's like with the cops. You're more scared of the cops than you are of God. You don't even understand that this cop right now, his heart is in the hand of God. And if God wants to squeeze and make it burst, he can. It sounds crazy the way I'm saying it. But I promise you, man, the wicked, they went too far, Hashem. They went too far. This is how I know Mashiach is coming. But there's a dilemma. You can't make the Mashiach come now. You're going to lose too many of your children. So something has to happen to speed up the process. Just like it says in the book of Zechariah. Judah will fight against Israel. What? Judah's going to fight against Israel. So you're thinking Jews in Israel will be fighting with each other. No. These are going to be Jews that left Israel, went to other lands, assimilated with those lands, and now fight for those armies. And they're coming to attack Israel with these armies from Iran, from God knows, Syria. Who knows? It could be probably not even Syria, but the Palestinians themselves are already there, ready to attack. Oh my God, Hashem, I got to say something now. And I want everybody listening to this talk to say amen when I'm done. Dear God, can you please humble the Palestinians in such a way that when they go to speak a lie or a mistruth, their tongue will freeze in their mouth? Amen. Protect your children from these wicked people. And I say wicked, not all the Palestinians are wicked. Absolutely not. You'll see some good Palestinians that will help a Jew absolutely a billion times. God should bless them. I'm talking the ones that want to slice the throats of babies. I'm talking to the ones that want to murder families. I'm talking to the ones that want to walk into a synagogue and in front of the holy presence of Hashem, murder. I'm talking about those people. I want to make it very clear. When I say wicked, I'm not talking about a guy and a girl who got into a fight and they were rude to each other. Nah, that's not wicked. Wicked has a connotation of repeating the same thing over and over with an ego, not caring what God thinks and doing your own thing. That's wicked. You understand? Those are the kind of people I'm addressing, yo. And I'm letting you know, man, please, bro, for your own good, homie, for your own good, Man, I'm telling you for your own good, get away from evil people. If you wicked and you see that you're getting sucked into this lifestyle because you hang out with people like that or you're maybe working for a boss that's the most wicked, whatever, get away from that situation, bro, because it's going to affect you. It's going to affect you like it affected the dogs in Sodom and Gomorrah that became gay from the sex crimes that the people kept. You understand? Think about what I'm telling you, bro. When you're around wicked spirits, that spirit will attach to you and try to penetrate you. And if you're not smart, and if you're not prepared, and if you're not ready, that spirit can enter your brain. You know what it's like? It's like you're having the best day, and then something happens to ruin your day. It can ruin your day for 20 minutes. It can ruin your day for four hours. However long you want it to ruin your day, that's how long you'll ruin your day. And that's what I mean by penetrating your soul. You let it penetrate deep, you lost five hours of your day. You let it penetrate a little, you lost 20 minutes. You understand? You have to know that everything's being directed by God. And I want to give you such a beautiful lesson that I learned from the book of Samuel through King David. So we see that King David cursed Yoav after he killed Avner. Now, we see that the descendants of King David suffered the curses that he cursed Yoav. So we think right away, okay, so if you curse the wicked, then whatever you curse the wicked with, that curse will come on your you or your descendants, right? That's the wrong, wrong. This is why I love the books that I study out of because they go so deep. It clearly says the reason why King David was punished wasn't because he cursed the wicked mitzvah. 
to curse the wicked. I prove it to you. When the wicked died, the Egyptians, we sang a song about it, bro. What are you talking about? So then we're going to ask me, so why did King David get punished? You know why? Because it was excessive. That's why. And this and then this and then that. And that was too much. Just God, please destroy this wicked person for making your children suffer. I want every Camp Kika listener to say amen right now. And if in your heart you cannot say amen to that, then don't listen to my talks. You know why? Because you fake. Actually, the opposite. Keep listening so we could strengthen your mind to know what's right from wrong. You know why? Because when you have mercy on the wicked, you don't have mercy on their victims. Yo, I got to say that again. When you don't have mercy, no, when you have mercy on the wicked, you will not, and you do not have mercy on their victims. Wow. You understand what's going on? Yes, if the wicked person wants to change, I'll be the first one to run up to him and give him a talk and encourage him. Absolutely. There are a few people in my life that did things to me that were so dirty that I'm nervous how God is going to attack. But if those people themselves came up to me and apologized and did it in a way where I saw by their actions that they were really serious, man, I would help this guy. I would probably become his best friend. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I'm almost going to cry when I say that because only Hashem knows how real that is. Yo, I have no hate for any Jew. Hashem will testify to that. But when you're a Jew and you make God's children suffer with ego, arrogance, rudeness, and smugness, I have no love for you. Zero love, the opposite, bro. Like King David said, your enemies are my enemies. You're an enemy of God if you make God's children suffer. You understand what I'm saying? You, I'll give you an example of somebody, who, somebody who's an enemy of God only for 25 minutes. I know somebody who smokes cigars on the beach. Nicest guy, bro. Nice guy. I tell you something about this guy. True story. I was sitting by a restaurant one day talking to somebody and I was collecting money for this dude that was homeless. And I was telling this guy, he was like a comedian, famous comedian. And I was like, oh, listen... You don't keep Shabbat, you don't eat kosher, you know, here's a good way for you to do a mitzvah, have some compassion. There's a guy, he's like, give me five bucks. Bro, the guy next to him, I think some Egyptian guy, I don't know, Moroccan, I don't know who he was, don't even know this guy. He comes up to me and he gives me 20 bucks. And I said, what is this for? So he goes, oh, I was listening to you and I just want to help out this guy. And I was like, no, man, God bless you, whatever. And I took the 20 bucks. Man... That was so beautiful. You know why? Because that showed the love that this guy has for God's children. But at the same time, this very guy will smoke cigars on the beach, laughing with his friends. You know, not even talking anything dirty, like a good dude, bro. Just smiling, laughing, having a good time. Maybe drinking a beer. You know, not you, just chilling by the beach, enjoying his life. He's not sinning at all. Zero, he is allowed to do that. You understand? As long as he's not drunk and cursing and being rude. But this guy, when he smokes his cigarettes, he becomes an enemy of God. You know why? Because he's making God's children suffer. Now, if you say it's unknowingly, it cannot be unknowingly. He himself knows how it smells. You understand? It's just that his desire to smoke the cigar supersedes his love for God's children in that moment. That's it's very simple. Very simple. And this dude, I never told him that, bro. And you know what? Maybe that's Hashem wanting me to, to say something to him. He's the guy, he's classy, bro. When you say something to somebody, and now this is kind of like a criticism, you know, it's constructive, it's beautiful, it's with love, with honey. But you better be very careful before you criticize somebody in this world. You know why? Because if you criticize the wrong person, he might go psycho, yo. He might get possessed by the devil right there and start flipping out. He might have a meltdown. You don't know. No, you really don't know. But this guy, you could tell he would take it. Even if he didn't want to change, <clears throat> excuse me, he would listen to you and say, I appreciate the advice. And he continued to smoke. No problem. But God willing, I'll meet him. I just saw his son. His son, I don't know this kid, but he looks like a nice kid. 
So I just saw his son the other day and I was about to tell his son. I'm like, yo, I just want to tell you something that your dad did and then tell him the story about, you know, the 20 bucks. <laughs> I like to spread good news, you know what I mean? Because it makes, it strengthens people's love in God. Sometimes when I see injustice Hashem and I know I could fix it, and I have to keep my mouth shut. That is extremely difficult for me. I just want you to know, which I know you know. Maybe I'm saying that for my listeners more, if not for you, obviously. You got to understand, man. Like, you cannot say Hashem remembered because he wouldn't remember. He always knows. You know what I mean? There's like things that you apply to humans that you cannot apply to God. Yo, I'm going to tell you a secret and I don't even know. How deep this secret gets But we'll just talk about it for a second And then hopefully God will direct me to read about it There is only one time That God in the Torah Compares himself to a man I can't even believe I'm saying this But it's true Now it might be in Tehillim Not in the Torah I'm almost sure it's in the Torah He calls himself A man of war I gotta know why Hashem would do that Why would Hashem So right away I start thinking You know to humble himself To show that he's giving love to the people That just like how a man could go on a war path with, You know and go nuts and destroy everything in it's path He can do that as well Ah that sounds like a decent answer But not, not a good one Let's see if I can go deeper A man of war I don't know ah, That's something that God is going to have to explain to me I don't know, I don't know. We gotta let that go right now, but... And now, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, which I like. It's a good challenge. I'm gonna go find out where it says it, and in my next talk, I'm gonna, God willing, put it in so we can address it and talk more about it. Love you, Hashem. I love... I love how you allow my brain to fly all over the world and all over the universes to the deepest crevices of this earth. And to see secrets that very few could see. And you know why? You know why? I'm going to tell you why. Because I dedicate my life to the Word of God. That's why. I promise you, I know so many people that are just as intellectual as me. And if they took the time and studied like I, they might be even more wise than I am. Or remember more things. Or tell stories in a better way. I don't really know. But I'm trying to tell you, it's right there for you to pick it up and eat it. It's like everywhere you walk, there's a honeycomb dripping with the most sweetest honey you'll ever taste. It's right there, but nobody sees it. You know why? I tell you why. Because to study the Word of God and to have the merit for it to sink into your head deep enough for you to give talks about it and help people always wherever you are. Because, you know, right away a situation pops up, you go deep into your brain and right away the answer is going to come to you Why? Based on everything you studied It would all fit in like a puzzle You know what I mean? And not always, not always The minute you think that Oh yeah, 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 ask me any question Ask me any question <laughs> You're going to see how quick Hashem is going to humble you He's going to humble you Like I did one time to this guy man, And I did it as a joke And he took it the wrong way I really underestimated how big this guy's ego was There was a guy that I used to hear me teach Torah now, he was impressed with what I was teaching, but there were some things that he didn't like that I said. So he was like very kind of modern, conservative. Well, it wasn't modern. He was conservative. Reform-like. So he was like, no, oh, no, you're too young to teach Torah. Who are you? Go to Chabad, this, that. I said, some of the people in Chabad teach what you're teaching. What are you talking about? No, no, no. He tells me about a book. Why, does, why do evil things happen to righteous people? I said, whoever wrote that book is not a rabbi. I said, evil things will never happen to righteous people. Evil things will happen to people that do evil things. That means that righteous person did something evil. What, are you kidding me? Come on, bro. Stop trying to distort the justice of God. Anyway, whatever. And he used to get into it with me until I was clever enough to know to just back away from him. But in the middle of all this, where he would keep constantly trying to put me down and my knowledge and I can't teach and come to this class and I remember one time I told him not even just from an ego point of view just because it was what came to my mind I said buddy to be honest with you I could teach that class now I'm not going to go to a class and listen to some guy telling me not to fear God you understand like I'll get up and embarrass this dude bro and I wouldn't even do it on purpose I just it would be impossible for me not to say something so in a classy way I would challenge him and then I would have to defeat him and that's pretty hard for these rabbis to swallow, bro. You know what I mean? So, 
whatever. So I said to him, yo, I'm not going to this class. Oh, because you don't know. And I said, yeah, whatever. So one day, I saw him sitting with a bunch of people that we all know. And out of nowhere, man, I don't know where this came from. It's like, Hashem, Hashem sent me to do this. So I walked up to him. And again, I did this kind of as a joke just to show him how silly this whole ego thing is. You know what I mean? Like, just to show anybody can look dumb when God wants, bro. Including me, man. God forbid it should never happen. And I promise you it will never happen as long as I stick to him, love him, adore him, and help his children every step of the way. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. 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 I don't know how many times I said amen, but if I said it seven... I love it. Listen. So I walked over to the table and I looked at him and I go, Mickey Mouse, cat or a dog? So he looks at me and he goes, dog. And everybody at the table literally started bawling, laughing. Oh, they were banging on it, laughing. And I started giggling so hard. And I looked at his face and I realized at that moment, uh uh-oh. He's going to go nuts. Yo, he goes, what? What? That's not a fair question. That's like if I ask you what color is George Washington's white horse. You trick me. That doesn't mean anything. I said to him, bro, it's a joke, bro. It's a mouse. Nobody cares. Yo, he got so mad. So I'll never forget the next day. Yo, I cannot make this up, bro. And sometimes, you know, when you tell, oh, Hashem, I love you so much. I'm going to finish this and then address that. So I woke up to him. No, I'm sitting by the pool. And he comes up to me and I see in his hand he has a piece of paper. So I'm like, ah, this is probably an article from some conservative rabbi that he wants me to read. And I'm going to have to make a million corrections. Like, come on, man, I don't want to deal with this. Comes up to me, gives his paper. He goes, please, for me, read it. So I said, okay. And he walked away. No, he actually stood there because I gave the paper back to him. So I started to look at the paper. It was filled with a bunch of words, whatever. I look at it. You know what it says? It's like a list of all of his accolades. You know, like what school he went to, how he graduated at the top of his class. He was like showing me how smart he was. So I'll never forget, man. I looked at him. I don't remember exactly what I said, but I said something, I'm sure, to the effect. Like this knowledge does not impress me. This is all academic knowledge, bro. If you sat here and showed me on a piece of paper, you finished the whole series of Mom the West 20,000 times, then I would say, wow, 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 wow. I would tell you to give me a class. You understand? He wanted to show me how smart he was. And when he came to show me how smart he was, he showed me how unsmart he was. You understand? Ay, 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 ay. This all comes from ego, bro. And this guy, if he just would have humbled himself and let me taunt him, I could have saved him from a lot of problems, bro. Because he used to bully people. He was very disrespectful, bro, as a bully. You know, man, he would go up to 30-year-old dudes that were like bodybuilders and get rude with them, knowing they wouldn't do anything because he's an old dude. Just very fresh with it, you know what I mean? But Hashem, unfortunately, had to handle him. And I say that because I was kind of like friends with him. I thought he was like a decent guy, but, you know, then you get to know who he really is. That's what it is. Most people that are really in their heart altruistically kind of like intrinsically kind of nice. Well, can't, uh, let me rephrase that. It's just sometimes you meet people that they're nice, then they gain power or something happens, you know, and then they become jerks. So that's what I'm talking about, man. Those people, man, if you're a jerk, God is going to take a hammer from heaven and he's going to smash you into a billion pieces, bro. It's obviously a figure of speech, but you get the point, man. You don't want to do that, man. He's going to humble you badly, bro. Don't ever make God's children suffer. Oh, this is what I want to talk about. Hashem, the other day, I was talking to my friend, and I'm doing this. Man, this is embarrassing that I'm going to do this, but I don't care. I'm doing it because I want every single person listening to understand how strict the judgment is when it comes to either gossiping or just talking in general. I was telling a friend of mine, and this is a friend I know he's not going to go gossip. We don't even know that many people. It was just something that happened about somebody that I don't even believe he knew. But I was telling him the story. I said, what's about somebody he didn't know? So I was telling him the story, and the guy, I was describing how he got so upset. And I said he banged on the table, but he didn't. He was upset enough that he would have, but he didn't. I just kind of added that in, I guess, in the saying the story. You know, sometimes you embellish. 
And I didn't get a chance to correct it. And then I forgot about it. And right now I remembered it. So instead of, I'll probably call him and tell him. Or I might clip this and play it for him. <laughs> but that's just to let him and everybody else know. Always try to stick to the truth a million percent, bro. A billion percent. You know why? Because God is the symbol of truth, modesty, justice, and love. And love, absolutely. Yo, listen, man. I'm not going to cry, Hashem. I'm not, I'm not, man. If I really wanted to cry right now and open up my heart, I could do it. I could do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. Something in my heart is telling me to scream out. (laughs) Something in my heart is telling me to tell you if you guys don't change, Hashem is going to kill you, yo. <laughs> he wants me to tell you that if you don't fix what you need to fix, and you continue with this smugness and this ego and this arrogance, he's going to murder, maim, and cripple you, bro. I'm telling you, man. Oh, man, you might lose a child, bro. <laughs> You might lose a child, bro. You might call Hashem in a moment of desperate need and He's going to ignore you. Like you do to people, man. If you are a wicked person, man, I'm telling you for your own good, it's guaranteed. Listen, let me tell you something. I spoke about, I heard somebody the other day speak about something he did 30 years ago. And you could tell by the way he spoke about it. That he never got punished for it. Not only did he not get punished for it. He think he got away with it. And laughed about it. On social media. Like bragging about it. Like it was a funny thing. Not in a million years. Will he know. That one day. Somebody is going to chin check him. Just like he chin checked this dude. Just like he said. How the jaw was right there for that punch. He's going to be right there for that punch. You're going to see, man, you don't understand. I deal with God every second of my life because I'm aware of Him, in tune to Him. You understand? And I'm telling you, He doesn't let go, bro. He doesn't release the punishment. He'll only release the punishment when you fix it. And fixing it doesn't mean, oh, God, I'm sorry you hurt one of your children. No, you got to go to that person. You got to ask Him for forgiveness. You got to come gotta make peace real peace talk about what happened throw everything on the table you know i have to tell you man that if you don't throw everything on the table if you have an issue with somebody even if it's your wife and you're withholding information and you kind of put it off to the side and you pretend play dumb you'll never have peace you'll never have peace you're only gonna have peace when you throw everything on the table everything and address it all then you'll have peace trust me i know what i'm talking about there's something penetrating my brain right now that I want to say because it's kind of related to that. And it's something's blocking it, but Hashem's going to release it, yo. I don't know. It'll come to me later. But it was a lesson. Oh, here it is. Beautiful. Hashem, I love you. If you want to know if your wife loves you in the middle of an argument, Ask her, do you love me? And if she says, absolutely, like she stops her argument and there says, I love you, and then continues her argument, keep her for eternity. But if you, if she says, ah, what, does, what does that have to do with it? If whatever, but ugh, like my, my, I cannot say. But when somebody in my family says, what does God got to do with it? Yo, me and my mother literally yell at the top of our lungs. He has Everything to do with it. Yo, they try. Yo, people in my family. God, you gotta forgive them for the merit of me and my mother. Yo, please. Because they do good things. But I'm telling you that is not good. It is not a good look. And me and my mother say he's involved in everything. Yo, they try to march. What does God have to do with it? What does God have to do with it? You wouldn't be alive if God didn't have anything to do with it. What are you talking about, bro? So... If you're so this is what it said, and this is what I wanted to speak on, and then I'll apply it to what I just said. 
It was Ish Moshet, accused Avner of sleeping with Shaul's concubine Ritzma. Look at how Hashem gives me this information, bro. Off the top of the head, easy. And I'm telling you, it's not because I have a, you know, oh, the most intelligent. Ah, not even close. Not even close. Ask me a tough math question. I'll probably not even get it right, bro. You understand? Come on. It's because I dedicate myself to the word of God. You don't get it, bro. So Ishbashet accused Avner of sleeping with the concubine of Shaul Ritzpah. And instead of him outright denying it, he was like, I can't believe you're accusing me of this. This is ridiculous. Am I the dog at the head of Judah? I forgot exactly what he said, but yo, come on, bro. Come on. So right away, the Torah teaches us that he should have said, absolutely not. He should have uncategorically denied it. Or sorry, categorically denied it. You understand? He should have said, absolutely not. Not. But that's not what he said. So I apply it to like this. If you want to fight with your girl or your wife in the middle of the argument, when you guys are going at it about something, you know, serious, just say, do you love me? And her reaction will tell you everything you need to know, bro. I promise you that. I'm giving you secrets deep from the Torah. Be clever. Put your ego down. And learn messenger of God who was sent to you by a heavenly word and was dispatched and the only reason I was dispatched was because I changed my life I worked on my ego I dedicated my life to the word of God I worked on keeping Shabbat and kept it I worked on eating kosher and did it like I didn't keep nothing Nothing, and I was a tough kid, and I had a big ego. But I always had one thing, two things that I always had that I was born with compassion. Even when I was tough, I had compassion. And the other thing is justice and truth. Yo, that's it, Hashem. <laughs> that's it. I love you. Even though I was a wicked kid, I had compassion, justice, and truth. I had a big ego. I wouldn't treat girls so nice, you know what I mean? I would be rude and disrespectful. Not to how you think, God forbid, like that. But just like I'd be dating one girl, and if I liked another girl, I might be dating both of them at the same time without telling them. You know what I mean? That's called dirty and wicked. And I already told you in one of my past videos, I already ate that hard. How God punished me for every girl I ever hurt. Hashem sent me such a beautiful, beautiful girl, yo. Beautiful. So to me, in my eyes, absolutely stunning. And she was an angel of God in the form of a demon that came to punish me. And she played with me and she lied to me and she made fun of me and she put my head in the dirt and I ate it hard. I ate it, yo. Three months. That's what it was. That's what it was, bro. I'm telling you. I'm telling you live that happened to me. Hashem waited for years. It was probably uh, about 15 years. And then when he gave me the punishment, it's like he took all that suffering. He put it in a box and threw it on my head. <laughs> and I love you for that, Hashem. My Lord. God in the heavens above the most mighty, the most powerful, the most everything good. Ask me, why did God feel the need to create a world? You know why? Because the giver of all good needed to give good. So he created a world where he could give good. Now when he created this world, he's not going to just give you good to just give it to you. You have to earn it. So he made a world in such a way that you will live and get a test. And through that test, he will determine if you deserve heaven or not. And the test will be long. To a bunch of lives, bro. I don't know what life I'm in, but I could tell you one thing. This is probably the last one. This is probably the last Gilgul. I have a feeling that is so true. Not just because of my want for Mashiach to come and to make justice. Because somebody will say, oh, I want Mashiach now. And a modern Orthodox Jew will say, oh, no, no, but the Laker game is on tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sorry I have to say it like that, bro. 
but he doesn't understand when Mashiach comes, it will be followed by peace, harmony, love, and justice. The perfect world where you can go to the beach with your baby and enjoy the universe, bro. Show me where you can do that today, bro. Very rare. You're going to take your baby to the beach, a guy smoking a cigar, a girl's in a thong bathing suit, God forbid. You know what it is, bro. You don't need to, me to tell you. Blasting music with curses. You know how the world got. Just like the Torah teaches us, bro. When you see the generations backsliding, then await the Mashiach because he's very close. And now the generation has gotten lower and lower and lower and lower. And the Mashiach is close, bro. So it's not only my last skill goal. It's also yours as well. Take heed. Take note. And take your soul and clean it. I want to give a quick shout out to my boy Sean. Yo, this dude. I got to admit. Really respects the Torah. He is the only secular. Kind of like. Mixed with the Goyim You know what I mean He's still kind of In that lifestyle He knows He'll tell you He's the only one That I know That's secular That talks like a rabbi Like he'll say Certain things Not so deep Simple things But if you analyze What he says It shows you That he really does Have a pure heart And that's amazing bro And he allowed me To teach him a little bit You know what I mean And I helped him a lot In certain areas And he'll tell you that but if he would really be a Camp Kika listener, and you know why he's not, it's not because he doesn't like listening to me talk. I could call this dude right now and talk to him for 12 hours straight and he's cool with it. It's because the Satan blocks him from doing it, bro. It's scary. It's scary, bro. Scary, 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 man. You don't understand. I see things that you don't see. I see that God is giving a lot of these schools into the hands of leaders that are deceitful. So that shows me that the people deserve this kind of a rabbi. That's horrible, bro. What does the Gemara say? God gives the people a rabbi on their level. They're a level three. He's going to give them a rabbi level 2.5. You understand? Or 3.1, whatever. You get the point, man. So I see that. So that means if Hashem is putting these people in control... That means the people deserve it. If the people deserve it, they got to be really bad. Because deceit, dishonor, stealing, lying, tricks. Wow, wow, wow. Just like in the time of the Holocaust. We're going to end it like this. Listen. Justice, peace, and truth are the three pillars that the world stands on. You understand? When those pillars are fractured, the world is going to crumble. It's going to happen soon. And I hope and pray to God you're ready for it. May you bless us. May you protect us. And may you preserve and watch over all your righteous children. Always, Hashem. I love you. Always. Always.